Hey guys, Lay Boy Scout here. It's knife review time yet again. This time, the Sog Aegis in Tanto, partially serrated version. Interesting, interesting. Quite unusual from what we usually see with the Sog Aegis. Is this the most popular version of it? Probably not. That's probably why we don't see this more often. Quite an interesting knife anyway, and I've been EDCing this for at least a week and a half now, so I'm going to try to speak from an informed perspective, and we'll just see if I have anything good to say about this, or anything useful. But let's begin, shall we? Size, weight, materials. This thing comes in at about 3.1 ounces, which is pretty impressive. The handle materials are a pretty rugged Zytel also with some rubber inserts here and there, and also this digi checkering, digi grip they call it. Okay, yeah, it works this way. It slides you forward that way, so it doesn't really do anything that way. Uh, this uh, rubber insert here works great on, you know, your pants pocket, but uh, does it do anything for your hand? I don't know. Not that much. Not that much. I haven't put this thing through a lot of hard use, so I can't really say one way or another. Just been carrying it and using it for basic EDC tasks, which I don't believe it excels at. But we'll continue on with the size, weight, and materials and uh, try to get to that other information later. It is an OS 8 steel blade. It is uh, titanium nitride coated for um, sort of an anti-reflective and you know darker look and also pretty sleek. It looks very cool. Does that help with the rust resistance? I believe it does. But um, yeah, I'm not a professional on the subject, so I don't really know. Uh, the locking mechanism is SOG's lock, whatever you call this thing, whatever they call it, I'm not even sure. But it's this sort of side lock mechanism that uh, I've heard works really well and appears to work well in my use of it. And uh, I like, you know, I can disengage it pretty, e pretty easily and get it closed with one hand without a lot of difficulty. So that's cool. That's important to me. As you see the blade shape and grind, it is a hollow ground uh, Tonto uh, tip. And I think it's, I know it's hollow ground right here. I can't tell if it's hollow or maybe just flat ground right there with a nice little swedge on the top, which also feels semi hollow ground, could be flat ground, doesn't really matter with the swedge. As you see, it's got some nice aggressive uh, serrations right here. Uh, so, you know. Tonto blade shapes, they are what they are. You know, they just, they don't add a lot. They don't um, excel at EDC tasks, let's put it that way. I don't feel like they do. But they look cool, don't they? And they sure are good for stabbing things because of that nice, strong point. Well, okay, cool. That's what you get with it. Now, uh, the E just comes in a lot of model variations, a number of different handle colors. Um, I believe there's like a digi camo version of it. Uh, the blade comes in like a shiny stainless steel and also, a, I think, a, a coated version of it as well. And uh, the other versions of the blade itself are not Tonto, and those ones are quite different looking. I believe that's the full flat ground version of the blade. You've all seen that, I'm sure. And if you haven't, I encourage you to go look around for other SOG Aegis reviews, and you'll get uh, a good look at a lot of different versions of this knife. Now let's go ahead and look under the hood, under the subsection of construction. Let's see what this looks like under there. There are no liners. It's all Zytel. Is that a problem? I don't know, maybe. I mean, I, I hear that it's not. I hear that this thing is tough enough, and it seems it seems pretty strong. But, you know, I like at least some small, thin liners in there. I don't know. What do you think? Maybe it needs it, maybe it doesn't. It feels a little cheap without them. I'll just say that. All Zytel. Then again, as I'm squeezing it and I'm holding this thing, it does feel pretty tough. So I'll just say that much about it. And the lockup, front to back... Um, I have to say that it does give just a little bit. It does give just a little bit front to back. And side to side, it gives more. It gives even more side to side. I don't know if your specimen will vary, but I do feel some side to side play in this uh, particular specimen. It could be that it's used. It was passed on to me for this review by my friends at uh, Gears Buyers Guide slash Gun Websites. Um, they passed it on for me for this uh, the Wounded Warrior Project uh, benefit uh, deal, 
and it's a pretty cool arrangement that uh, they've got set up and me and a handful of other YouTubers are reviewing a handful of gear um, on their behalf or for them uh, they're going to be using the, these reviews to again to uh, to benefit the Wounded Warrior project very cool very cool let's move on to the knife again the lockup is not perfect I wish it was blade centering however is pretty good pretty 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 good I'm gonna say it's pretty good clip design and the position of the clip well you know it's got that famous really deep pocket clip everybody seems to love this and it is pretty cool that it buries so deep in your pocket however I would like to be able to extract it a little more easily to tell you the truth it goes so deep and there's so little to grab onto once it's down in there that uh, you really kind of have to reach far down to grab it and pull it out. Maybe that works for you. If it does, okay, never mind. You know what? It's not a problem for you. I think, you know, I kind of like to have a little something to grab onto. Spyderco Tenacious, for instance, gives you a little something to grab onto when you're pulling it out. I feel like that's a little bit nicer. That's just a personal preference. How maintainable is it? Well, you can disassemble this thing. Yes, you can. Screws screws you can disassemble it you can reposition the pocket clip to the other side um, you cannot reposition this locking mechanism so you're gonna have to learn how to do that with the other hand um, so it's it's about as maintainable as you need it to be uh, the fit and finish on it you know I think it's a pretty cool looking knife I have always thought so uh, in um, you know watching other reviews and uh, you know kind of hadn't having my eye on this knife for a long time I always thought it was a very cool knife and I always wanted to try it out now that I have, I'm not that excited about it. I'm kind of satisfied, I guess you could say. Um, but the fit, and, the fit and finish on the knife itself is about as, about as good as you could ask for. It really is. It feels nice. It looks, you know, I don't see mold lines. I don't see any of that stuff that uh, kind of gives it away as being a cheap knife. You know, kind of a not, uh, not well-built knife. So what are some sensible applications under usability for this knife? Well, it's a tactical blade, basically. For EDC, everyday carry, I don't see it excelling, simply because of the blade shape. Uh, having a nice sweep in your blade, a nice belly in your blade, is extremely useful for everyday carry tasks. And uh, simple, simple work, you know, simple uses not having that and this is basically the same sort of sweep that the actually or the normal Aegis has um, not having that sort of sweep means that you're going to be using this tip all the time this sort of secondary tip on the Tonto you're going to be using that all the time you're not going to get the same sort of real estate cutting real estate it's I think you know what I mean it's kind of difficult to explain of course you know with those serrations a lot of folks like serrations on their everyday carry blade so that could be a big bonus for you. It does deploy pretty quickly. Pretty quickly, but not a whole lot faster than the Spyderco Tenacious. Eh, that comes out pretty fast, actually. Kershaw Blitz, very, very fast. By the way, neither of these have a spring in them. Neither one of these has a spring in them. Okay. This one does have a spring in it. And, yeah. It's almost slow in comparison. Almost slow. It takes a little less effort, but it's almost slow in comparison. Uh, you know, maybe that's not worth it to me. How about the retention and safety, pocket and hand? Well, it's going to retain very well because of that rubber right here and the deep pocket clip. It'll go so deep down into your pocket that it'll stay there. And this rubber insert will uh, kind of connect with your uh, pant pocket and the pressure from the clip will force that into place and keep it there for you know through a lot of uh, a lot of uh, bending and moving and whatever you happen to do on your day-to-day day-to-day uh, uh, -day chores and your how you move around in your daily life that's gonna stay in your pocket clip pretty well even if you're outdoors hiking and doing a lot of active stuff I believe that will um, and in hand you know there's some slight sort of uh, kind of jimping here the key on the finger choil to uh, keep your finger from moving forward doesn't really work. Manage to scratch your finger a little bit, 
but I don't think it's really going to keep your finger from moving forward. What really works on this is the jimping. That is some serious jimping. Maybe the best I've seen. I mean, that, uh, what do you call that? It's sort of this triangular jimping, this uh, sort of teepee-shaped stuff that's like, it's like saw teeth almost. When I get my thumb down on top of that, it's very, very aggressive. Very, very aggressive. So um, the, the retention as far as uh, thumb on top of the blade is concerned, that's quite, quite effective. One more thing. There is a little safety right here so that when you close it, you can activate that safety. Oh, I had it wrong way. You can activate that safety up like this. There you go. And it's hard to see, but there's a little bit of a green um, color right there now. And once that's engaged, it doesn't open. Okay, cool. Good for the kids, I guess. Personally, I wouldn't use it. It, uh, when it came to me, it had been used a little bit, so the edge was fairly dull, but I was able to bring it back pretty quickly without a lot of difficulty. So the tip and edge, I'm going to say, especially on this Aus 8 steel, I found it to be quite restorable. It holds an edge long enough and well enough, and uh, I feel like it's um, easy enough to sharpen that uh, I like it as a steel. Rust resistance is another story. But uh, again, this, if this is going to be an everyday carry blade, which it probably won't, it's more of a tactical blade. It, uh, you know, Aus 8 could be a problem as a, sort of a field blade, a tactical blade in that sense. Don't know. It depends on what you're going to run into. How does it feel in hand and in pocket? Uh, the bulk in pocket has not been a problem for me. I thought it would be. But, uh, you know, with similar knives, having carried similar knives like this one, the Kershaw Blitz, the Spyderco Tenacious, having carried similar knives, and plenty others that are around the same size and width, um, I have not found this to be uncomfortable in pocket. Then again, I'm a sort of large guy, around six foot two, and uh, that doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't bother me to have this sort of a size of a knife in my pocket. And the feel in hand, again, if I didn't already say so, the ergonomics are good, not the best I've felt, however. What is the best I've felt? I don't know, but Tenacious feels a little better to me, honestly. It does. I, would, I could go with a, a larger handle on the Tenacious for a little better improved ergonomics, but for its size, the ergonomics are great. And on this one, they're okay, but I don't prefer them over the Tenacious. So um, aesthetics, cool factor. It is a good looking knife. I've always thought so, and I always think I've always thought it's a pretty cool looking knife. You know, um, everything about it is uh, pretty neat. You know, the spring assist. Well, that's a big cool factor right there. Uh, the lightness, the carryability of it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the steel is good steel. Uh, Tanto looks cool, but uh, usefulness. Um, I don't know. That's uh, it drops some points for me in uh, cool factor there because. It's just not as useful as the like as I'd like it to be. So, um, and what do I expect uh, as far as the brand and the components are concerned? SOG is known for, uh, well, pretty good quality, and a lot. It's a pretty popular knife, pretty popular brand. A lot of guys like it. Personally, I think they're overpriced. I think they're really overpriced. This particular one, around sixty dollars. I think it's overpriced. We're getting ahead of myself, but I do think it is. Performance and roll as a tactical knife, yeah, okay, I think it'll work pretty well. I really can't speak with authority there because I've never been a police officer or a soldier of any kind, but uh, it's lightweight, and that's a big deal. That means you can carry it pretty easily, and you don't uh, feel it in your pocket as much, and when you pull it out to use it, it's ready to go quickly, and it can get the job done pretty quickly and pretty well. So what is the MSRP on this? The list price, if I'm not mistaken, is over a hundred dollars. That's the MSRP. But you can find this on Amazon.com for sixty-ish. Okay, still, I think that's overpriced. I just do. Sorry. I mean, it's well built, sure. I can't uh, speak extensively about it because I've only had it for a short time. But it feels well built. But sixty dollars well built? Man, I don't know. Equivalent steel right here. G10 handle scales. Nice tough knife. 
only in the $30 range. $60 plus dollars? I don't know, man. I just don't see it. So the quality and cool for the price, I think for the price, oh, it just doesn't do it for me. It doesn't do it for me. It doesn't work for me. I think the E just is a little bit overpriced. And yes, I think it is a quality knife, but you can get quality knives for a considerably less amount of money. So I'm going to say that uh, the SOG Aegis is eh, not enough for the price. That's my opinion anyway. There's the SOG Aegis in Tanto, partly serrated and uh, titanium nitride coated. I'm the late Boy Scout, guys. Thanks for hanging in there with this on this review with me. And uh, more knife reviews, more gear reviews to come. We'll see y'all later.